Hi, welcome to the fourth episode of Knits and Pieces. I'm Jacqueline. I'm Noelle. And this is Zoe. And I'm Jacqueline's mom and Zoe's grandma. And we're coming to you from London, Ontario, Canada. Um, we just wanted to say before we started that thanks everybody for subscribing and for those just watching. We're having lots of fun. Yeah, we really um, enjoy meeting and, and talking to people that have the same passion about knitting as we do. So we're really having a good time doing this. So to start off our episode today, we're going to talk about um, some past pieces that we've done in our 3G section. Okay, so I guess I'll start off. So this sweater that I'm wearing is actually called, um, I had to do some research to find this because it's probably at least over 20 years old, yeah. but it's called um, Fisherman's Errand Shirt, and it was designed by Debbie Bliss and Fiona McTagg. So it's knit in 100% um, wool that my mom and dad brought me back from Ireland over 20 years ago. And I like the sweater, and I mean, I don't know if you can see, I can stand up. Well, maybe insert a picture of the whole and th thing. Yeah, but the, the only problem that I have with it is the way the sweater was designed, the sleeves are really big. Lots of extra. But I like, I like this, so I'm thinking I might do something to adjust this. I'm actually thinking of just um, sewing it. Sewing yeah, and then cutting it, because it's 100% wool, so it should stay together okay, but Barring that, I'm not sure I want to rip out the sleeves because it's a saddle shoulder. I'd have to go all the way up to here. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to think about it. But I just wish the, the sleeves were just a little bit smaller. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, it style's different now, right? It style's different now. <laughs> but, and then Zoe's wearing this little outfit. It's a little sweater coat, still a little big for her. Yep. And the hat, which I don't know if she'll model for us or not. <laughs> Maybe for... Hey, Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this was an outfit that I made for Jacqueline. Uh, well, how old are you, Jacqueline? 30, 30, 35. 35? 36? 35. Okay, anyways, it's an outfit that I made Don't for even Jacqueline. Know how old you I have five children. <laughs> anyways, it was an outfit that I made for Jacqueline, so a whole lot of years ago, at least 35 years ago. Um, it was actually a patents pattern, and it was in a book called... Um, Quicker knits, okay, and it was quicker knits because back then a lot of baby knits were made in really fine, like four ply yarn at least, yeah. or sometimes three ply. But this pattern actually called for Astra, which was a sport weight, mm -hmm. but I did it in a worsted weight, so it would be a little bit more like so a. You changed the pattern even back then. Changed the pattern even <laughs> back then, so it would be a little bit more like a jacket style and a yeah. hat. So you wore it a lot when you were little, and it's just, you know, acrylic yarn, and but it's pretty much stood the test of time. Yeah. So. Um, and for mine, I'm wearing actually the first piece that I ever knit, which was um, a pattern by Americo. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, sorry, a wool by Americo. Yeah. It was the Cotton Flamme, which is 100% cotton. Um, it's really soft and it's just a big, really, it's a big, long <laughs> um, scarf that right. I've just wrapped around a couple times, but it's nice and light. Yeah. So, Do you want to see, Grandma? Come here. Come here. Yeah, so, so it's not that it's not that warm, but um, it's actually funny enough. It's that thick and thin, um, like yeah, you kind of get the, like the schlub of the yeah, cotton, so kind really of soft. like the I mean that other one, what that other it, what that, was that called Copito or something? Uh, Co Copito Medio. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, that I had in the last episode that my husband had bought me. So, yeah, this is kind of like a lighter weight yep. version of it, but yeah. and it was it was um, a great pattern just to practice stockings but you yeah to, like, I mean, knit and pearl right like I said the, it was the first thing that I had ever yep and you've just got it tied so right now but if I you just have it tied to, up you could wear it a bunch of ways yeah like like and if you this, keep it like that if you don't sew it up you still have a choice of wearing, wearing it just it, like a just scarf like, yeah. yeah exactly yeah. No, it so. looks good like as a cowl yeah so so that's it for our first section um, and now uh, speaking of little baby hats we're going to move on to our hat chat section okay. So we just had a quick wardrobe change. Yes. Uh, it's a little bit warmer now than it has been. It's a little warm to keep those big, heavy, heavy woolen sweaters on. So. And that being said, I'll talk about this little hat that she's wearing before she gets too hot as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, for uh, our hat make along, I actually made Zoe the little itty bitty bear cub hat, <laughs> <laughs> which she's done with. She's like, it's warmer in the weather now, Mom. Come on. That's right. Um, and that was by Carolyn Ingram. Um, and. I knit it in Debbie Bliss Cashmerino. Can we show this to the people? Baby Cashmerino, I think. Baby Cashmerino. Yeah, it's a little bit finer. Um, That's so cute. <laughs> uh, it turned out really well, I think. Um, we had to make a couple of modifications to the pattern because <laughs> it was actually made for a, a preemie. Yep. 
so we had to knit it a little bit bigger. Um, so mom helped me with the calculations, but um, yeah, it was a really you. quick knit and I learned a lot of different techniques. Yeah, 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 <laughs> um, cool. Mom helped me with the ears and yeah, I think it turned out yeah, pretty cute. well. I like it. So, so, um, so speaking about our hat chat, are you going to listen? Are you going to talk about the winner? Yeah. Okay, so we had a hat chat, Cal, that started um, back in the middle of March, March yep. and it went to the end of April. So we um, locked the thread actually on May 1st and we drew a winner just with random number, number generator. Mm -hmm. And we actually had 13, 13 hats entries. in there. So yep. we're, we're really pleased with that. Um, so the winner of our uh, hat chat make along was Lorraine from the UK. And she is Elinus Crafts mm -hmm. on Ravelry. And she knit the stripy wa stripy waffle hat. Yeah, we did the random number generator. Yep. We had um, 13 entries, which we were pretty pleased with for our first Cal. Yeah. So she was the lucky winner, and she is going to receive this skein of fleece artist on the National Parks collection. This is the Ontario colorway, and it's actually representative of Thousand Islands National Park. So it's really pretty, really nice colors, colors in it. So um, Lorraine, if you just want to message me on Ravelry and let me know your address, we'll get this prize in the mail to you. Yeah. Okay, and we want to thank everybody that entered. We were really glad to see everybody's hats that they made, and yep. Jacqueline got enthused and made a hat, and so, yeah. I was going to, and then somehow or other <laughs> didn't quite get one made. But we're glad one of us did, since yes. it was our cow, so one of us did get one made. Um, and then we're going to announce another uh, knit along, but first mom's going to talk about a knit along that she just finished. Yeah, I was um, in a knit along. It was with Crafty Mama. Um, she's got a Ravelry group. She also does a podcast. She's also got an Etsy store called <coughs> Crafty Mama Designs. And I believe she actually just launched a website too, so they can mm -hmm. actually go in and purchase off her website. Yeah. So I had entered with um, a pair of socks um, and I won this prize. Oh, nice. So yeah, so it's a really nice project bag. Um, I've got two skeins of yarn in there right oh. now. It's a really pretty spring colors like pale lilac and oh. the pale green. Um, it's really nicely lined inside. Nice like zigzag oh, in the yeah. same colors that's on the bag. And then I won this skein of yarn. So the skein of yarn really matches it nicely too. It's got some oh, of the pinks pretty. and purples and, and it's sparkle. got some sparkle yeah. in it. So this colorway was called um, be my Valentine, and it's her sugar base, and there's her business card there. Okay, her yarn is called Candy Coated Yarn. Mm -hmm. So that was one that I won for the prize, but she was so kind that she sent along another skein that we could use as a giveaway. So here's the other skein that she sent, and it's this beautiful peaches and pale yellow and a little bit of pink and coral in there, and it just looks like summer, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. So, and again, that's candy coated yarn. This is her um, sweet base and it's 75% uh, superwash merino, 25% nylon. She was so sweet to send this to us for a giveaway. So we're going to set up um, a thread in the Ravelry group, okay? And we're going to have a prompt. And since we're getting into this, this really summer nice so summer weather, um, we just want you to go in, join the Ravelry group, answer the prompt, and the, all we want to know is what's your favorite thing to knit during summer. the warm summer weather. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and then we'll pick a prize, random number generator, or sorry, <laughs> random number <laughs> generator, and we'll announce who won that on the next podcast. Yep. Okay, so go in there, get your entry in, and before we podcast the next time, which we'll probably, we're hoping it'll be about three weeks, yeah. so we will um, draw for that prize. Yeah. Okay. And then speaking of summer knits, we're going to announce our next knit along, which is going to be called uh, Tea Time. So yep. we just want uh, you guys to make anything that's short, short sleeve or, or sleeveless. Right. Um, in any weight of yarn, in any size, yep. adult, baby. Yep. Um, you can enter as many times as you want. And that it's going to be open until we said at the end of July. Yep. Give it a little bit more yep. time. We're going to give you some more time because a lot of summer knits are kind of knit in finer yarn yeah so sometimes they take a bit longer but i know what like i have a lot of sweaters but i tend to have mostly sweaters that are like winter sweaters and yeah. i thought well i really like nice to have to some do nice something yeah a bit lighter right yeah and there's so many <laughs> nice there's so many nice yarns out there that you can knit with to do summer garments like cotton linen yep. silk um yeah, and I mean, even in the evening, sometimes it's nice to have just a little cardi that's just got short sleeves to throw on over. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, 
that knit along is starting right now and it's going to go to the end of july yep. so i will start a ravelry thread you can go in there and post your finished objects we'll also start a chat thread so if you've got any questions about anything you yeah. can go in and ask them on the ravelry chat thread so on to our fos uh should i go first sure okay so um obviously we already talked about this but this was always itty bitty uh bear cup hat mm -hmm. which you help me with the ears yep. which we have story about in a second in a but second, yeah. <laughs> um i also wanted to show you uh, my other it's not a totally finished object it's a almost it's, it's, it's a, an almost hoe and almost, an almost half, half finished <laughs> object <laughs> um but it's my first uh sock my first yep. vanilla sock um in the zen yarn gardens um oak colorway that One i got kind, yeah yep um so uh, Mom helped me uh, with the toe. Well, when I got here yesterday, yeah. Jacqueline said, I've gotten as far as my sweater and as far as my sock I can go without yeah. help. So she had gotten the sock right down to the toe and she had yeah. to do the toe. So I told her how to do the decreases. Well, it was actually when we were talking, when you were helping me with the ears for this, this one, yes, right? Because yes. And Mom was helping me, but the ears are knit uh, inside out for these little ears. Yeah, and, and then Mom, Mom the helped round. me with the, uh, yes, with the, um, the, the finish of it which <laughs> um she had told me it was kitchener stitch fair enough but uh, i guess i was probably either holding zoe or not paying attention 100 percent. but when we got to the uh sock i was like oh yeah you're, you're gonna help me with uh the windsor stitch thing yeah, right okay. so mom's <laughs> like this is hilarious but let, let's just be honest here we live in ontario where yes. there is a kitchener and a Windsor. Yeah, there's two cities there's called two cities. Kitchener and Windsor, so Jacqueline <laughs> got the wrong city. I don't know where Windsor Anyways. came from, but yes, <laughs> Kitchener Stitch. And, and, but since then, we've looked it up to see why it was called a Kitchener Stitch. Because it was... Oh, let me pull, pull it up, though. But then you we say were talking it about it. Someone, some guy that wanted to make strong socks for the people in Horatio the... Herbert Kitchener, to okay. be precise. Okay. <laughs> and knitting lore has it that he developed it um, for British American women to use in the war knitting efforts. Right, so because <laughs> the soldiers were complaining about a seam at the top of their toes, so they developed a Kitchener stitch so that the knitting so that, would just go over the top of the, yeah. of the sock. So. so anyways, but... When I explained it to you, you got it right away. Like the kid, it was pretty easy to do. Yeah, and I, I remember. I remember you, you doing the hat and being like, "Oh, that's going to be really difficult to learn." Well, some people do have trouble with it, but you, you just. I mean, it, it might have so. been a, a little bit more difficult to learn this way because it they were it tiny, inside yeah. out too, yeah. and they were tiny. But yeah. um, now that I've done it once on the sock, it yep. seems pretty straightforward. And, and it's then, not so bad as long as you have a chunk of time and you can. You don't have to put it down because sometimes if you put it down, then you forgot where you are when you pick it up to keep going. Yeah. So, so. the next one will be done when the baby is sleeping. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So. But yeah. yeah. But it looks good. Yeah. So, so those are my two finished objects. Okay. So um, I finished a few things. A few. <laughs> so one of the things that I finished was the sweater that I was working on last podcast, and that is the Feather and Fern. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is by Jennifer Steingass. So pretty. And I've actually had a chance to wear it a couple of times because it has been colder. It's getting warmer now, mm -hmm. so it's probably going to get put away for the, the season. But I did it in um, McCausland woolen mills they're uh like a two-ply worsted weight wool that we picked up when we were on a trip to prince edward island mm -hmm. and the gray is just um their natural gray color so it's not dyed it's just the color of the sheet and then the the goldy yellowy which is kind of more tonal you yep. can see different shades in it that was still the mccausland yarn but i picked it up at a little gift shop because someone had hand dyed it oh, into nice. those colors yeah so really nice nice easy pattern um a really good pattern for first color work because it's just the two colors mm -hmm. per row so you don't have to worry about switching colors too much and just the round rolled neck which was pretty easy and it's knit from the top down so you can kind of try it on as you go, as you go. Yep. yep so that was my first finished object nice and um then my next finished object is a pair of socks okay so these are Socks on a Plane mm -hmm. by Laura Linneman. And I want to make it's, those next. Those yeah, it, next. it's a pretty popular pattern. I mean, I, I see that a lot of people knit it, and it's kind of got a cable going down, like, either side, so it goes down the outside of your leg. Mm -hmm. These ones are knit in um, Wisdom Yarns Socky Silk. So the makeup of that yarn is, um, let me see, I've got it down here. It is 55% merino, 25% nylon, and 20% silk. So the silk, will, okay. as well as the nylon, will make it a really strong, strong. sock. Yep. And the colorway for this one is called Big Volcano. 
Mm -hmm. And that yarn comes in 100 gram skeins, and there's 402 meters in the skein. So I had a little bit left over, but these are a men's sock, and I did the like the leg fairly long, so I don't have a whole lot left, but I do. There's still lots in it to do a pair of men's socks. Um, again, I use the Susan B. Anderson Smooth Operator when I do my heels and toes. Yeah. Yep. So those are a gift for someone who has a birthday in May. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I'm sure you don't want to I don't think you want to either, so that. yeah, I'll still be surprised. <laughs> okay, so those are my first pair of socks, and then I finished a second pair. These ones are so pretty. And these ones are, I don't know if you can see the tree pattern there. These ones are, it's it. actually not a pattern. It was, oh, yeah, right it was um, a pearl bug on Ravelry, and she also does a podcast called 10,000 Stitches. She had done these socks and she called them um, the forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. So I looked on her pattern page for them and she had just a little graph of the um, tree. tree yeah. So I kind of just modified it a bit. I made the tree a little bit longer because I really wanted them to look Christmassy. Mm -hmm. And this yarn is um, Blue Moon Fiber Arts, but it's their super, super sparkle because it's got the, the silver Stellina in it. Yep. And it is, I believe I've got the makeup down here. I've got the there's the there's the tag from it okay it's their super sparkle it is 92 percent superwash merino and then eight percent lurex and this one comes in 113 gram ball and it's 365 meters but again i still have some left and this is this would be like probably like your size of socks yep so probably for like a ladies like eight to ten mm -hmm. where's an eight to ten and i still had some of the yarn left and the colorway here is called Fur Evergreen. So you're saying these are my size? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have a Christmas project going that I can't tell you about. Yeah. Okay. So then, anyways, and um, I also did, if you can see there, I did the the mock cable cuff where you get like the little design yeah, that looks like a cable, but you don't yeah. have to actually do a cable to get it. Yeah, it's really Yeah, funny. so yeah, so I really like them. And again, it's a smooth operator for the heels and the toes. I usually always do an afterthought heel because you can just knit the whole sock and then go back and put the heels in yep. after. Okay. Are those your only socks or do you have more? I don't have any more. Just those. That's <laughs> it. And then my last finished object I can't show you. It was a little cardigan sweater, sweater shrug sweater. actually, yeah. a little shrug um, that I gave to my other granddaughter Molly. Um, it was called Entrache and it is by Lisa Shimmery yep. and she is Froggenette Makes Things on yeah. Ravelry and she's got the cutest kids patterns. Mm -hmm. Um, so this, I can show you the yarn that I made it in, and we'll put a we'll picture, put a picture in. Yeah. I have a picture. We'll put a picture it in. It's really adorable pattern. Yeah. But this is made in, um, this is a Rowan yarn, okay? It's classic Lux, and it's really soft. It's got like a little bit of um, sparkle in it, mm -hmm. but it's really soft. So this yarn actually is, I know it says somewhere on here, it is 64% extra fine merino, 10% angora. Okay. It's 24% nylon, and then it's got 2% of metallic fiber so that just gives you that little yeah. sparkle so um and it only took this is a 50 gram skein and it only took one skein oh really yeah it only took one skein to do the little shrug um and i still have a couple left you can't get this yarn anymore unfortunately they've discontinued it but i've still got a couple of balls left so i'll have to make one because it makes a really cute little shrug just to put on over like a summer dress so. yeah when yeah. it's just a little bit cooler right yep okay so that's that's it for our that's it FOs. for for fo's okay so on to our whips so do you want to start with your whips? Sure. Now we're going to start with um, our works in progress. So my first whip I have shown before on the last podcast, but I do have more of it done. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is, let's see if I can stretch it out here. This must be close to completed. It's yeah. There's, I don't have too much more to go, but the row is getting so long that it takes a lot longer to do the rows. So anyways, if you, it's like a triangle shawl. But you can see there's getting to be more and more of the aqua color in it. Mm -hmm. So this shawl is the Myra shawl, and it is by Melanie Berg, who's also Maryland, Maryland on Ravelry. She has a lot of nice patterns. Um, this is done in Jameson's, and this is their Ultra. So it's a lace weight yarn. Um, it is 50% lamb's wool and 50% Shetland wool. Okay, so you can kind of we'll hold it. it up here. Okay, so all these all these ends, some of the ends back here I'll have to sew in, but when I've joined a ball in the middle, I've kind of spit spliced it. So if there's any little ends that are through it, once I block it, I'll just be able to cut those off. Oh, okay. Yep. So 
But anyways, it's, um, yeah, it should be done soon. It looks like it's going to be a good size. I think I'll have some yarn left, so I think I might make some tassels for like the point and the oh, two ends. Pretty. Yeah, yeah. And it'll be a nice lightweight shawl for, for summertime. Summer. Yep. Yeah. So that was my first whip. Um, um, <laughs> so my first whip is obviously my second song. Mm -hmm. So we decided that we're not going to do the heels until I'm finished right. both, right? Yeah. Just in case I don't have enough, but we're pretty sure no, that. No, we wait it. You should have enough. Have enough, but... Um, yeah, so I just cast this on last night, so it's not very much done, but yeah. I think that this sock will definitely go um, a lot faster, faster yeah. than well, the, the first one. The first sock I cast on for you. Uh, Remember, I cast it on and did the first row and then you yeah. did it, but this one you cast on yourself. Yeah. 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 I think I'll probably be able to do this full one, hopefully, by Yeah, well, you, like, without, like, you know, and it, 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 it is, yeah, it is a little bit tricky when you're joining it up, right? Yeah. But well, and it, I'm definitely a lot, uh, like because I've done the whole sock, I'm more used to these needles yeah. too, because like this was the first time I've ever knit something with this, this small of needle size. Yep. So now it just seems like- Yeah, but how did you do your easy. hat? Remember how you did your hat? Oh yeah, so um, I had decided to do these socks, my first pair onto two double pointed needles, right. but then the hat, I actually uh, used magic blue. Yeah. And actually I like both. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't know if I have a preference right now, Probably the more socks I do, the more projects I do. Well, I'll yeah. Really have well, a I still I still switch back and forth like between. It doesn't yeah, work. and I had bought an uh, uh, the chagu. Uh, chagu. 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 Uh, we don't know. How to <laughs> that, but, but yeah, I love that cord. That cord is so so nice. So I mean, I think it make it makes a difference when depending on the size of the project too, yep. probably. So, but I think you would like because I usually do my socks on a two point two five chagu, and I believe it's a hundred centimeter. Um, yeah, well, 100 centimeter needle because they, they count in the end the of the needles and it's yeah. a fixed circular. And yeah. I really like the cord on that to do the socks with magic glue. So, so, so yeah, so hopefully I'll have a finished pair of socks. Yeah, no, I think you will. And, um, when you get both done, then we'll do the heels. And I like to kind of do them and then do my, my two heels at the same time because when I do the, um, afterthought heel mm -hmm. before I start the decreases a lot of times I do just some plain rows first yep. and depending on what size of socks I'm doing depends how many rows I do mm -hmm. and I find if I finish a sock and put the heel and then go on to the next sock I forget how many rows I did You're done, so yeah. I kind of like doing them one after Together. the other so I kind of keep everything yeah even so okay okay so Your next whip. Second whip. you don't have any socks no I don't have any socks no, you I don't have any these, socks like, <laughs> I haven't had time to cast anywhere. Oh, She's going to cast on socks like right after this podcast, probably. Yeah. Or if we take a break, maybe I'll have some cast on yeah. before the end. Okay, so my second whip is a shawl. This so is so pretty, and I'm so jealous that you have so much of this done already. Because, funny enough, we can tell, tell cool. them this too. Okay. So this shawl is called the Lysolot Shawl. Lysolette? Lysolette? Lysa, well, it's Lisa. Lisa. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa Lott. Lott. Because it's L-O-T-T-E. -T -T -E. So Lisa Lott. For sure. Shawl. Pronouncing and, things apparently. That's right. And <laughs> it is by Beatrice Perone Dallin. And she is thread and label dot, thread and ladle dot com. Okay. So you can go in, you can look for her patterns on Ravelry. And she does have a website called Thread and Ladle. Mm -hmm. And she's got beautiful patterns. And this pattern is, well... Well, this pattern was is actually so a free pretty. pattern on yeah. Ravelry, and it is like if you see the detail at the end of the shawl, like it's just looks a whole lot more complicated than it actually is. It's really easy to do, um, and it worked up fast. And this yarn is concentric. amazing. Yes, this is concentric by Haiku. By Haiku, and it's a hundred percent baby llama. Yep. And no, sorry, baby alpaca. Baby alpaca. Yeah. Hundred percent baby alpaca. It is 200 grams and it's 400 meters. So it's a worsted weight. So this shawl I'm doing on um, a five millimeter needle. Mm -hmm. And th this shawl actually is a fingering weight shawl pattern. Yes, pattern. Right? So I've just kind of adapted it and I'm doing it on the five millimeter because it's worsted. And I just kind of counted rows. And the pattern at the end, like you can basically, if you've still got yarn left, you can keep going to use up the yarn. And I actually had started my I-cord bind off but I decided I was going to have too much yarn left, so I'm going to take it back out and I'm going to do a few more rows, more rows. before I, yeah, because I want to use up yep. as much as the yarn as I can. So, <laughs> speaking about this project, uh, Mom and I both got actually a ball of this concentric uh, yarn on lo local yarn store day. Local yarn store day, yeah. <laughs> but Mom, being the much faster knitter than I am, has already cast on, no, it's finished. Well, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I haven't even started yet. But, that being said, 
we hadn't even talked to each other about what pattern that we wanted to do and <laughs> not knowing that not talking to each other we both said oh i was like mom this is the one i want to do and she's like no i already <laughs> talked about this to so and so and like she might do it too so it's like we all pick we all pick the same, same pattern shawl, the same pattern independent of each other yeah. for a shawl to do because this is not actually a pattern that specifically calls for this yarn. No. Because there were some patterns that specifically call for the concentric. But somebody had done it on Ravelry. Somebody and had done it on Ravelry. And actually, yarn, the colorway. Color. Yeah, yes. my colorway. So I'd seen it and been like, oh, that's pretty. I really like the way yeah. that knits up. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway, but again, it's it's going to be warm. So it's going to be it's going to be one of those things that will get done and we'll have to put away until right the fall. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Um, so my next whip. Um, is my Baldrick sweater by Isabel Kramer. And so pretty. I've gotten pretty, I got yeah, a decent like amount done, I think. Um, yeah, I was surprised. <laughs> I'm not surprised. She's like, yeah, and there's no mistakes in there or anything? No, 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 like, no, no that's no not. Mistakes. I was just surprised because you have a baby that you got. That, that is true. Done. This is one that I did work on after she went to, to yeah. sleep. Just because, I mean, after I did a couple of rows and like the sets and stuff that you just have to do multiple sets of uh, four rows, like, it's easy enough to do and to remember, yep. um, but it was more the fact that I didn't want to have to put it down and then remember where I, where, where you were. I was. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm down to well, uh, Mum just told me last night. Actually, uh, we cast off. Oh, well, on we, we put the, but the like, stitches onto waist yarn for yeah, the, sleeves, for the sleeves, right? Yep. So now it's just a matter of me doing enough for the body, yep. right? And then yeah, and the there's sleeves. no rib or anything on it, so it's no, not, so it's, it's just going to be like straight down. Yeah, but we probably should even that cord's really not big enough because you can't get a good sense of how how like, big it's all it is. Up, yeah, so we should we'll probably put it on a bigger cord. Needle. Yeah, which again was the one thing that like mom had given me a bigger cord. a bigger cord and been like, you can do this here, you can just do it. Just <laughs> just it yep. I, I did it. It was fine. Yeah, it was fine. I and you've done a lot of things in that sweater. You've done like. The short, the German short rows. Yep. Right. You've done the lifted, left and right increases. Left and right increases. Yep. yep. Now you know how to put the stitches onto the onto the waist yarn for the sleeves. Yep. And you cast on the backwards loop method for the underarms. For the underarms. Yep. Yeah. So. so there's a lot of things I've I've learned, but nothing's been overly difficult. No. It's just learning. Yep. Stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I love the color. I know. I, and. and I don't care if I'm done this in the middle of July. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear it. <laughs> we'll turn the air conditioning on <laughs> and wear it around the house. But yeah. yeah, I'm really excited to keep working on this and to get this done. Yeah, so. yeah, it looks good. Thanks. Okay, and my last whip here. Um, again, this was yarn that I bought at local yarn store day. It's so pretty, and it's so it's such a different like different color, color than what yeah. it looked like originally it, yeah. in the skein right so this yarn is the gaia fingering you can tell i like blue mini fiber mm -hmm. anyways this is the gaia fingering it is um i'll only need one ball for the whole sweater yep. okay it is 225 grams because they're little, grams. They're little. Well, that, no <laughs> no it's 225 grams it's eight ounces so there is 1024 meters in the ball Okay, so it's fingering. It's good yardage. It is um, a hundred percent organic merino, and it is not superwash. So, which is nice because sometimes the superwash ones really grow when mm -hmm. you. So it's not superwash, but I love it. Love the feel of it. It feels nice. It's squishy, soft, and the color is amazing. It's like gray, but it's got little overtones of like, um, yeah, like kind of like yellow and pink and coral and a little bit of lavender. But from far away, so, it almost just looks like a, like a taupey yeah, color, right? Yeah, yeah. It's really pretty. Yeah, and the pattern I'm doing is JC by Isabel Kramer. Of course. And it is just um, a little button front cardigan. So I've got, it's top down. So the top part, has got a little yoke that's got a little bit of a design in it. You can see it's not really cables, but it's just kind of... Um, I don't know a pretty design in it mm -hmm. and then when you get down at the very bottom there's a little bit of design before you do the rib mm -hmm. and same on the sleeves but yeah I really like it so it's coming along and again I'm past the arms so it's just knitting knitting, to knitting the down yep. yeah well and then the sleeves yeah okay so that's my last whip okay so now we are moving on to our next segment which is acquisition no you forgot the new segment last week oh sorry last podcast. more RFOs yeah. RFOs, yep. So this is our refinished, refurbished, redone. repaired, redone. <laughs> so anyway, these socks are socks that you saw the last podcast and I had replaced the heel. 
<laughs> okay, and I had said that I was going to keep the yarn because I was worried about Eventually. some of the other parts wearing out. Yeah. Well, they did. did. <laughs> okay, so actually the toes. In both. In both. And the heel in the, the other bow, one. And the heel in this one. So this is um, Koigu. 100% wool, but it's not. It doesn't have any nylon in it. So, no so when yeah. I go through and I fix these, I'm actually gonna. I'm She's actually gonna else. put in. Yep, I'm gonna put in a yarn that's got nylon in it. Yeah. So that I don't have to do it again. So I will fix it with reinforced yeah. yarn. Okay. Now this next one. Okay, this is a sweater that I knit at the beginning of 2017, mm -hmm. and I have washed things in my washing machine before. Like it's got a gentle cycle or like a wool cycle, and it's usually mm -hmm. pretty good, but well, those one socks. Lately, it's just been um, catching things. So it caught the edge of this and it's kind of ripped it out. So I didn't know what I was going to do. I thought I was maybe going to just, just do this. Yeah, so I was just going to maybe like sew the button band over top of the buttonhole band and then just, just wear it as like I just make a pullover. <laughs> yeah. But I actually do. I went through my yarn and I actually do still That's have. Nice. Yeah, I actually do still have this amount of yarn left and I really like the sweater. The sweater is called Crisscross and it's by Isabel Kramer. And the back is really pretty. It's just got this crisscross design on it and it's really nice. And I do wear it, I did wear it open a lot. So I, I'd have to go through and just take the button band, band off and yeah. replace it. So I'm sure with that much yarn and with, with what, what I get off it. the button band, I should be able to re-knit the band. And yeah. so that'll be a project to get done for next year because it's kind of getting too warm to, to wear, wear it anyways. anyways. Yeah. But we did get a new washing machine <laughs> because this one was just starting to have too many things go wrong with it. So I made sure that the new one's got lots of cycles. You can actually just soak something in it and drain it and without have having to have it spin mm -hmm. or have it agitate or... Okay, I, I just always make sure now when I wash something in the washing machine that I put it in one of those garment bags yes. first so it's at least protected. Yeah, makes so. sense. So now on to acquisitions? Mm -hmm. Or should we more, uh, I guess, yeah. <laughs> aptly name it yarn haul because i'm not even going to show all of that because <laughs> we have an abundance of yarn this time but a couple of reasons for a couple of reasons yeah um a couple of weeks ago it was local yarn store day yep so we went and visited a couple of places yep and then mom also went to a toronto uh, knitter's frolic yes so she picked up some stuff for both of us <laughs> yes so i guess where do, where do you want to start the stuff we got well, from local yarn shop day sure um so we went to Sarnia, and this was the first local yarn shop day, right? Yes, yes. So we went to we went to three different places, right? We went to Feather Your Nest, Feather Your Nest in Sarnia. Yes, yep. we went to Heaven Is Handmade yep. in Sarnia, and then we decided since we'd gone to yarn shops in Sarnia because you live in London, we should go to one that's kind of a local Closer, yarn yeah. shop so in we London. Went, so we went to Little Red Mitten, yep, in St. Thomas. Yes, and we took Zoe to all of them. Yeah, so yeah. it was. And she was very good. She was very good. <laughs> very well behaved little baby. So. so so um, you start with some of the things that you got, and, and sure. if I have the same thing, I'll let you know. Yeah, so <laughs> my first one that we kind of already talked about was the Concentric 100% um, baby alpaca, and mine is in the color Shades of Grey. Yes, it's pretty. Um, do you remember, what was yours called? Did we say? I can't remember. I'll we'll put it in that. Yeah. But this is the one that I'm going to do the same shawl that mom has already got yeah, the as a work in progress. It'll Lisa, probably be Lisa Lott. Lisa Lott. So let <laughs> shawl. So um, yeah, I'm excited to cast this on. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. Maybe this will be my next cast, cast on. You're gonna give that shawl away when you're done. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's my first acquisition. Okay. Um, so one of the things that I got at local yarn shop day was a skein of oat. Well, I got a couple of skeins, but I'll just show you this one. This is probably what I'm gonna cast my next socks on with. I really like the Opal yarn for socks. It's um, a German yarn, I believe, and it wears amazing. Yeah. Like my favorite socks that I've knitted so far for myself are made out of this because I just like the way they feel. They wear well. They and stand what's, up. What's the breakdown? It's I think it's seventy five twenty five. So it's seventy five percent virgin wool. So I, it's I don't think that it's merino. Like it's a sturdier mm -hmm. yarn, and then twenty five percent polymid. Polymid. Which is like yeah. a nylon, yeah. Or, yeah. Anyway, so that was one of the things that I got at local yarn store. Okay, so okay. You can move on. And then I got some uh, sock wool, well, that I'm going to make socks with anyway, um, of the Blue Moon Fiber Arts Tigger Tarky. Mm -hmm. Can you say it? So um, this first color I'm showing, that's the deep, unrelenting 
gray, gray yeah, it's which is really pretty. It's got tonally colors through it. And then the second color I got was called River Rocked, and it's really pretty. It's got teals, oranges, like a linen color, a uh, green mossy like color. Really autumny. Yeah. yeah. I told should, mom, yeah, I was like, it's like a them. fall rainbow yeah, <laughs> of colors. Um, I've already kind of taken it apart once to, to look at it, but it's really pretty. And I think I'll probably do, like I said, a pair of socks, but maybe a plainer knit because I think the color will yeah. kind of speak for itself. See all the colors in it. Really pretty. Yeah, it's really pretty. So I did get some of that too, but I didn't bring it. Well, so. yeah, but you, you got all third blue moon fiber arts. Stuff. Yep. Yep. So the, the blue moon fiber arts and the concentric we got at, um, Feather your, your nest. nest and yeah. Yarn, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she has a really good selection of blue moon yeah, fiber arts yarns. Yeah, so, so okay. Um, I don't have anything else with me from local yarn store day, but I do have um, friends of ours went to Australia for a couple of months um, and they brought me back some yarns of mm -hmm. New Zealand merino. So, there's actually these two little kits. And they're to make these little um, baby slippers, baby, yeah. and they're so cute. And the yarn is so soft, so soft. It's touch yarn. It's um, pure merino wool um, made in New Zealand, and the the colors are just it's like a blush, spectacular. Like rose. Yep. So I'll color. show you the each of the little kits has pink, but then there's um, one mm -hmm. has the put it the right way here. One has the cream, and one has the gray, and they're just like beautiful shades really, really so pretty. in the kit too um comes with the pattern okay to make the little booties and then it also comes with the buttons the little decorative trim for the booties mm -hmm. so really pretty really soft um so thanks very much clive and nancy for bringing that back i think i have enough actually to do each of the babies a pair of slippers for next year and then i think i'll have enough to do them a little hat for next year too it'll be so soft and nice so so I still have some more yarn from local yarn store day. Okay. Um, again, from Heaven is Handmade, I got two. That's small. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they look similar. Not you'll see my color color scheme. I'll hold them up after I've talked about them. But uh, these are two skeins of lichen and lace. And this first one, I love this color so much. It's pretty. It's called Ginger Snap. Um, this is eighty twenty sock. Yep. Um, both games are that I got and then this color is called linen that's pretty too. it's really like totally yeah. cream taupey color I've done a few pairs of socks in the lichen and lace and it, they work up really, really nice. nicely yeah. so my sock patterns that I think I'm gonna do for these ones is gonna do the tuku honey which is Andrea Maori I yes think. it's Andrea Maori yep for the ginger snap ones and then probably snakes on socks on a plane yep uh, yeah, that would ones. look nice. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. But. And you could even do the socks on the plane with this. And if you had any of that left, you could use it for like the, the heels and the toes, toes? or something. Yeah. 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 And then that being said, that the one I almost grabbed to show you too, which is a very co similar Pink color, color yeah. scheme, if you see them all three together, um, is this one that I picked up from Little Red Mitten mm -hmm. in St. Thomas. Yeah. And this is by a brand called Leo and Roxy, which are indie dyers um, that are selling their stuff. I believe they sell it online as yep. well as in. Yeah, they sell Mitten, it in. Right? Yeah, they have a, a pretty good selection of it at Little Red Mitten, but you can also go online and order it too. So that's Leo and Roxy, and it's they've got really nice colors. They've yep. got a couple of different bases. Um, I think that's eighty. This is the eighty twenty. Yep. Yeah, and they've also got like an MCN, a merino cashmere nylon. Yep. They've got. Um, Tonals, they've got variegated, they've got self striping, yep. they've got fleece too if you want to spin. Yeah. Yeah, they've even got fleece too. So, so they've got really a nice. really good selection for yep. to start out with. Um, yep. And this is the colorway T Rose. That's pretty. I like it. Um, and then I guess I just thought that whatever I decide to do, if I want to do heels and toes in a different color, like I've got a good selection of yarns that work really nicely together. Um, yeah, and I, I, when we were there too, picked up a couple of the Leo and Roxy, and this one. This one here is a skein that they dyed specifically for local yarn store day. So it's just called hashtag LYS2018. Okay, so, so, I'll, so you I have get to get some more things. So, I did get <laughs> so I'll have to, but it, I should open that up because yeah. it's really pretty speckles and, and stuff in it when you open that up. So there's like the, you can see the speckles through there and it's got some like mint kind some, of green. Yeah, some like pale green in it and some nice cream and so I'll have to get a pair of socks made up in that for next year so that I can wear it on local yarn store. Mm -hmm. So, and then the other one that I got is a self-striping and it's really pretty. It's like, um, 
kind of like a fuchsia and uh, pink and a little bit of a soft brown, brown but really pretty. We saw a sample of that knit up. It's called Neapolitan. Yeah. So, so yeah. Like yeah. Strawberry yeah. vanilla and chocolate. Yep. Yeah. 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 Really pretty. And then when I almost left the shop, I couldn't, you couldn't. I couldn't <laughs> go out without picking up this. So this is, um, again, Leo and Roxy. It comes in this little cotton bag and this is their, they call it Tequila Sunrise Minis. Yeah. So there's like a 20 gram skein of each of those minis. So I'm not sure I, they look like baby socks to me. Or, yeah. or, or I, I do might like do like heels and toes and yeah, stuff in yeah. those, right? Or I might do like a plain gray pair and stripe all those colors. Yeah. In. So I haven't, yeah. I haven't decided yet, but I just, that just was so pretty. I couldn't. couldn't she couldn't, yeah. It. And I wasn't there to tell it was her. Actually, tell her no. It was so actually Lisa's fault because she yeah, showed it yeah. to yeah. me. It was Lisa's fault. Um, our friends from the Codependent Knitters, we also spent some time with them on. Yes, we met them at a couple Sunday. of different places, but they actually went to Little Red Mitten as well. So we met them there. And then you were already gone by this point, but we got um, these little mini boxes. So it was just a surprise, right? You didn't know what you was didn't, in You it. didn't know what color was in it. So you just, like Lisa and I got one and opened it at the same time, and we both loved the colors that we got. So there's the color that I got, and I think it's called Flamingo Legs. Yeah, and it goes so, really so nicely. And it goes really nicely with those, with other, those other minis. Yeah, yeah. Yep. so that was fun. So. Okay, so anything else for you? Um. Well... Some stuff now from Neutrano Knitters okay. Frolic. Um, Mom picked me up because I was looking for, <laughs> so I have more like and Lace. <laughs> Again, 80-20 sock. Um, she didn't have these colors, I don't think, at Heaven. No. It's handmade. No. Made, so that's why um, I was like, Mom, if you if you see these there, pick Not them Heaven up Not Heaven is handmade at, at Feather Neck. Feather Neck, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, so these are the colorways Nutmeg, which is uh, like a soft brown color, I yeah. guess you would say. And like... This one compared to the ginger snap is just the ginger snap's a lot more yep. orange yep. in color. And then I also got mom to pick me up some sugar plum, which I wasn't sure that it was gonna be this kind of pale ish, but it's really pretty. Yeah, it's really like, pretty. Yeah. I like it. Um you see like my preferences are like yeah, I know. I, <laughs> the same color because this is even like not that far from the, the that you're doing. Yeah, yeah, right now. But yep. that's okay. Maybe if these don't end up staying with me, maybe that'll be a present for somebody. Yeah. But yeah, I'm really excited to cast on with some of this. And then my last acquisition, um, Mom picked me up from Quince & Co. Um, it's a Quince & Co. Kestrel. Mm -hmm. And this so is 100% linen. linen. Mm -hmm. um, and Mom picked me up a bunch of different, well, no, not different, a bunch of eight skeins, eight skeins of this yep. to do the Pam Allen Davis mm -hmm. uh, sweater, which... Again, we talked about doing a, a later knit for the summer, so yep. that's going to be my project. Yep. Um, this color is really pretty. I, there was a couple. There's actually like a lot of different colors that were really gorgeous. Yep. That like, um, mom had to find one that there was enough <laughs> of. But uh, yep. I, I'm not disappointed at all because I really think it's really pretty. We had that pretty. one on your list. That was, and that color is Minos, I think. It's yeah. yeah. Minos and then I did get some Kestrel too, but yeah. I didn't bring it. But my color is Byzantine. A little darker it's like purple, a, it's like right? It's purpley gray. Whereas this one's like a Topi, yeah, yeah, gray, mopey color. Yep. Um, and then I guess just quickly because we're talking about the Quince and Cohen of Pam Allen Davis uh, pattern, I also did pick up not on your local yarn store day, but like actually just through Amazon, um, was Pam Allen's uh, Plain and Simple because I had seen Susan B. Anderson yeah, yeah. <laughs> post on Instagram that she was giving one of these away, and I'm like, even if there's not a chance that I don't get it. Like, I really want this yeah, book. It's got some beautiful it's patterns in there. It's got some really, really pretty patterns in it. Actually, like, there's not really one that I wouldn't wear. No, no. So. And they're just simple designs, but they're, and I think they're in Owl, which is like a worsted weight. So they'll be, yeah. yeah, so they'll be designs that knit up quickly. I'm uh, really, I'm debating right now one, between one. this one, Ash. Yep. And... Oh, oh is it? Yep. Oh, that one. This one, yeah, which is called Larch. Uh, yeah, Larch. Larch. Because I think one of the girls on Espa Street Co. did the Larch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty. So, I think it's really just a matter of which one I'm going to do first. first. I think yeah. I'll do them both, and probably more from this book too, because yep. they're just really, really nice patterns. Mm. And again, it'll be a little bit more of a learning curve for me because there's a couple uh, different techniques yep. in it that I haven't done before. Yeah. But well, it's good. still it's exciting to look forward to. Yeah. 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 So. Okay, so I went to the Toronto Knitters Frolic this past weekend with my friend Terry, who owns um, Feather Your Nest, mm -hmm. and 
One one dyer that we found that we really liked um, was this Westlake, and this is Westlake Knits, and everything that she dyes is dyed with natural dyes. Mm -hmm. So like she uses things like matter root, and this one actually is dyed with goldenrod. Um, and you would think it's called dew and it's green, but you'd think if it was dyed with goldenrod, it would be like a yellow more color, yellow, but it's yeah. not. It's, it's like a pale, pretty pale pretty green, green, yeah, green, yeah, really pretty green. Yeah. And it's kind of a little bit tonal. So I got enough skeins of this to do um, a fingering weight sweater because this is fingering weight. It's, um, let's see, it's got 115 grams. It's got 375 meters. So it's really good yardage. Though, right? uh, a little bit, yeah, yep. Just got a different. Twist but it's and it's right not now. super washed, so it'll make a really nice, a really nice sweater that yep. should hold its shape well. Her aesthetic is amazing. Like this is just really, her really her pretty, yeah. card, and her booth was spectacular. Like she had all these like soft yellows and peaches and melons mm -hmm. and corals and the greens and just I could have bought everything. Like <laughs> even a really really pretty like pink, and she had like she had like this way she had worsened weight she had big chunky stuff so mm -hmm. really nice so she does have a website too it's westlake knits so if you want to go in and take a look at her website yep. it's really worth going in there she from again, she's from toronto oh okay yeah and she also sells the dyes mm -hmm. so she sells the natural dyes she also sells seeds to grow some of the plants to make yeah. the dyes yes yes That's so but cool. unfortunately like some circle. of the plants though that they use a lot of you can't our temperature's not right not for right growing here, but the ones that you can, she's got the seeds for those. Oh, nice. So, okay, and then, um, I mean, I got other things, but one of the last things that I got at the Knitter Sprawlick was these two bags. Uh, Sock bags, so these are by- show me. These, these are by Zig Zag <laughs> Stitches. Okay, so the one's got the little trees, and if you look That's in it, so it's got cute. a little fox, and these are her sock totes, and then this one's got, um, Llamas. Llamas or alpacas, I'm not sure which they are. But anyways, I got two, so you get to pick one for you. <gasps> really? <laughs> yes. I'd be happy with either, so. Well, no, no, I, I want know. you to pick. I want you to pick whichever one you want, because I'd be know. happy they're with they're both that. so nice. <laughs> well, the battery's going to run out, so you got to pick. <laughs> um, maybe the trees. The trees? Okay. Yeah. See, I know there's a little fox in there. and Oh, those are so, so nice. Yeah, Yay, they feel. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, and they're really nice. If you look inside, they're lined with really nice fabric too, and they're just perfect for. for a, oh, yours has trees. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and mine's just perfect got, like, just to fold over and have your. Yeah, and your socks in it. Yeah. That's so really funny. nice. Really well, well made. And she's from. Yeah. She. You're <laughs> and she's from near. Um, Sarnia. I'm not sure if it's Bright Grove, but it's Sarnia area. So. Yeah. That's so really so like that. <laughs> okay. So now. We're going to move on to our last segment, which our is pieces. called Pieces. Yeah. Final our section. Pieces. I know. This has been a long episode. I know. <laughs> okay. So um, I didn't. I haven't woven anything new mm -hmm. this because our, we're redoing <laughs> our floors and I have a hard time getting to my loom right now. But I had a piece that I had done and I hadn't finished yet. So this is just, um, this is from the rug class that I went to and it was just learning how to weave so that you could weave a rug. So obviously this isn't big enough to be, this isn't big enough to be a rug, right? But it could be a hot plate. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna just like trim all the fringe down so it's just a little bit. And then it's 100% wool because you wouldn't want to use anything that's acrylic for a hot plate because right. it would melt, but yep. it's 100% wool. So I'll be able to use that for a hot plate. And I want to eventually like go bigger and, and make like some nice rugs either with stripes mm -hmm. or with some of this design in it. And you can do that because even though it's just a rigid heddle, if you use pickup sticks and you use this little, I don't, can't remember what it's called, but a pull-up bar, then you can get different shafts. So you can actually weave where you've got like more than one color on a row. Okay. So yeah, so it's kind of neat. Cool. Okay. Um, so for my first piece, I really just have two, <laughs> two more acquisitions really for my pieces. Well, this was a surprise. Well, yes, this is true. So. My dad graciously <laughs> um, made me this wool, wool winder, wool spinner. What do Swift. we call it? Swift. Swift. It's it's called it's called a Amish Swift. Amish no, Swift, but yeah. he's made them for my mom, and I wasn't expecting one. And mom <laughs> just showed up with it today, and or, I, or last night. Yeah. yeah, and. I thought it was yours. I was, just, no. but I was gonna be like, why did why did you bring that? We have like um, well that another one that's not not as nice. No. So um, thanks to my handy dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's really nice because he's got the 
these dowels and there's different holes along the cross beam so you can just move it for whatever the circumference of your, of yeah. your yarn hank is. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so yeah. play with that though. Um, and then my last piece that I want to talk about is that I picked up a punch needle, yeah. <laughs> which I've been talking about to my mom um, for a while. Um, because I've seen a bunch of uh, stuff on Instagram lately. I guess this is probably like the next new new thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really excited to do this. Uh, I don't know if we should go into the whole explanation of punch needle. Maybe when I we actually have a piece yeah. Yeah. Uh, started, because I have some designs in mind. Um, I'm probably going to probably do something up. I mean, I am a graphic designer, illustrator, so I'll probably come up with a pattern and then have something maybe for next podcast yeah. hopefully yeah. you can get where i still haven't found the monk's yeah cloth. looking for the monk's cloth um our like small well the craft stores don't seem to have that in stock so no. i might have to but, find but something online suzanne at knit stitch did say yeah. that she was gonna i get did pick this up at knit stitch in london um she has these in and actually these are the this is the sorry the 14 which is the finer needle and actually she's getting some Tense. larger ones in that i think i'm really yeah. going to pick up too so yeah, more to come on this uh, next episode, yeah. I think. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much it for this episode. Yeah. So again, we want to thank everybody for watching. Thanks for watching. Um, and go in and look up the cow. You know, get involved. We want you to make, um, you know, anything sleeveless, t-shirts. Yeah, uh, I can't wait to see where people decide to Yeah, baby because, dress. Yeah. Whatever. As long as it's like short sleeves or sleeveless, you can enter it in the cow. It can be for a baby, an adult, yep. in between, and have fun knitting it. So until yeah. next time. See you later. Yep. Happy Bye -bye. knitting. <laughs> yep.